Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Workplay TV channel for another exciting video. This is really exciting video for me, I've been waiting to do this one for a while. 3500 versus 350, 2019s. Yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. This is what we got right here. We got the Ram, we got the Ford, we got the Ford, we got the Ram, we got Power Stroke. We got Cummins, we got Torque Shift, we got Ison. Yes, sir, we have some content. So let's dive right into this. First off, full disclaimer, I am the owner of three, what gen are these Fords? From the 17 up, I'm the owner of three Ford 6.7 Power Stroke Turbo Diesel trucks. This is a 2019 F350. I have a 2017 F250 and a 2017 F550. So I am a bit partial to Ford. There's no way around it. I think they make great trucks. I had no issues with my trucks really whatsoever. They've treated me great. They've been awesome. I, I worked them. You can see the plow on the front. I don't just drive around. I actually work these trucks. That is the Ford 2019. 935 foot pound of torque 450 horsepower and she is a beast she is a beast and here we have the new fifth gen 2019 ram 3500 with the 6.7 high output cummins turbo diesel 400 horsepower 1000 foot pound of torque with a six speed ison transmission this is the big boy. This is the high output. This is the one you want if you're going to work. The one you want if you're going to tow. This is what you want right here. Exterior looks. We'll go with that first. So exterior looks. I think Ram did a great job on their slight redesign of their exterior. The front end is the big thing. They've really changed the front end and I think they've nailed it, the front end. The new grills, the new headlights. The new tow hooks, everything about the front end just screams hell yeah to me. This is not apples to apples, as you can tell right off the get-go. This is a limited Ram, and this is an XLT premium Ford. It would have been great to have a limited in the Ford or a platinum in the Ford, but I don't happen to own one. So this is what you get. So obviously exterior. I gotta give it to the Ram. The Ford is still a good looking truck, especially for an XLT model. It has the chrome package, but I gotta give it to the Ram when it comes to the exterior. Take a little walk around this thing. Very, very, very classy. Very classy looking truck. Ford, she looks like a work truck. And that's what she is. She's big, she's beefy, she's tough, she's robust. She's got 35 inch tires on it with deep lugs. That's what I bought it for, that's what it's been doing and it's been doing the job perfectly. Plow snow, tow trailers, off road, climbing hills, all that stuff. It's done it without a hiccup. We'll go into the interior. Again, this is an XLT. So no leather, no sunroof. Not a lot of bells and whistles in here, but it does the trick. There is a lot of plastic in here, and whether you get the XLT, the Platinum, the Limited, you're still gonna get a lot of hard plastics inside the Ford. That's just how she goes. Power driver seat, the back is manual and higher trims. That's all power. We're not gonna get into too many interior features because like I said, this is not apples to apples. But this truck does the trick. It absolutely has everything that you need it to have. Tons of room, tons of headroom. It has a very nice sitting position. Um, everything is at an arm's length away. Everything's very easy to reach. The navigation system works good. The infotainment system works good. It's basic, but it does the job. Yes, again, a lot of plastic, flimsy, flimsy plastics in here. When you push on stuff, the whole thing moves. That's just, just the way it is. I'm sure when Ford does their next redesign, they're gonna they're gonna crush the interior. Like they, they will, they absolutely will crush the interior. 
So here it is guys, this is the interior. It's very comfortable. This is the full center console, which I think is a must to be honest. The bench seat, unless you plan on having people in your in the front of the vehicle with you. I don't know why you'd want it. Tons of storage. Lots of storage here, storage here, USB ports. You can pop this out, get a little more storage. This slides over and makes four cup holders. The interior is functional, it does the trick. It absolutely does the trick. Climbing in the back, the Ford definitely has more room than the Ram. There's no doubt about that. There's probably a foot or so of room here between my knees and the front seat, and the front seat is where I'd be sitting. In the back of this truck, you do have your sort of old-fashioned cigarette lighter. You've got your um, two USB ports back here and a 110. Uh, that way, 110 two vents you don't have anything heated back here or no controls in the vents higher models do my my uh, lariat premium or my lariat ultimate package on my 250 has heated seats back here heated and cooled seats in the front which the limited has but back here guys there is a load of room loads of room tons of headroom this would be a pretty good place to be on a road trip there's no doubt about that so ford wins with back seat room Let's go over and climb into the Ram. And again, guys, keep in mind, again, these trims are not apples to apples in any way at all. Power folding side steps, which my Larry Ultimate has. Right away when you look at this, it just screams luxury. It screams high end. It screams workmanship. Everything about this interior, and it's no secret, Ram crushed the interior. They absolutely destroyed the competition when it came to the interior. No ifs, ands, or buts. Here's a little foam thing. You can take that out and clean it so you make yourself a big cubby hole there if you want to. Full drive power driver seat, which it should be. This is a limited. This truck is just under $100,000, like hundreds of dollars under $100,000. Wow. Obviously, what a difference from climbing out of that truck and into this truck. Luxury, luxury, luxury. This thing is incredible. This interior is incredible. Storage wise, you got your two little split cubby hole here, one USB port there. Open this up, loads of storage in there. Your little cup holder thing here, you do have storage here, and your coin holders. This locks in three positions one, two, three. This all comes, all this same setup comes with the like big horn and up if you opt for this configuration, not the bench seat. You have uh, wireless charging here, two USB ports and two USB-C ports as well. We're not going to get into this because this is just crazy. I'll talk about this a bit when we're on the road, but this isn't really what matters when you're comparing these two trucks. We're gonna talk about stuff that matters. Comfort, incredible. I've been in the Bighorn, which does not have the leather seats, and that truck was extremely comfortable as well. Headroom is a bit less in this truck. Absolutely, the headroom is, is a bit less. And here, where you have the adaptive cruise control and your blind spot, I mean, and your keep assist and all that stuff, that's what this box is for. I have a box similar to this in my Lariat Ultimate, not quite as big. But your visibility in this section is not as good as the Ford. The windshield is bigger in the Ford. This takes away quite a bit of your, of your vision as far as things that are high, which doesn't affect things that are coming at you. So it's not going to affect vision of things that you need to see, but... It, you might affect a bird up in that tree that you might not see in this truck, but you can in that. But anyway, keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. So here's the front seat. Extremely comfortable. Ram wins comfort. Even compared to my, my Lariat Ultimate. They're pretty close, but Ram still wins. So here we are climbing in the back. You can already tell there's not quite as much room. I've got about probably eight inches of room there, so you do lose a bit of room in the back of the truck compared to the compared to the 350. It's extremely comfortable back here though, very comfortable. This one has the fold down cup holders, which my Lariat Ultimate does have. So as far as the back seats go, 
with the Ford higher levels to the Dodge to the Ram higher levels they're pretty much the same this has heated seats back here two more USBs two more USB C's and you have your 110 no old-fashioned cigarette plug back here very similar to my Lariat Ultimate when you get back here to be completely honest the back seat comfort in the Ford may be a bit better so Ford I think you won that one another thing Ford does win at is when they when you fold the seats down the Ford which I'll show you this is the work truck so excuse the tools and stuff you have a complete flat floor from right here all the way across which is great for you know luggage great for animals great for a lot of things with the Ram they don't have that you do have storage cubbies here underneath this and you do have storage things in the floor if you do opt for that model or upgrade like a big horn to a level two you get these storage compartments which is great because in most trucks this is just dead space so they they utilize this which is which is awesome back seat storage ram wins back seat room if you fold the flat floor down like if you wanted to you know have my dogs back here you fold this down and it does give you a flat loading floor it's strong it will definitely handle the dogs there's no there's no doubt about that but it's not as good as the ford the back the back seat space with the flat floor the ford wins no doubt okay so now we're going to jump into some stuff that really matters if you're using these trucks 3500s 350s you're probably going to be working them if you're not working them, if you're not towing something, I don't know what you're buying this for, get yourself a half ton. Payload numbers. So this truck is loaded up. So when you start loading things onto a truck, you take away from the payload. The GVW on this truck is 11.8. The GVW on the Ford is 11.5. So this has a bit of a higher gross vehicle weight rating, 300 pounds more. The the available payload on this truck is 3,642 pounds. So that tells you, if you subtract those numbers, that will tell you how much this truck weighs. This truck is heavier than the Ford. The Ford is completely aluminum. The Dodge only shares, I believe it is the, is the hood and the tailgate that is aluminum. Don't quote me, it might be the doors as well. Looking at the Ford, the GVW is 11,500. The payload on this is 3623, so very, very comparable in payload. So you can tell that the Dodge, the Ram, is about 300 pounds heavier than what this truck is. But again, no, sorry. Yes, 300 pounds heavier than what this truck is. But again, that's a limited. This is an XLT. Front axle on this, 5990 pounds. The rear, 7230. So let's come over and take a look at the Ram. Okay, so here's the Ram, front 6,000. So that is basically identical, off by 10 pounds, 7,000 pounds in the rear. So if you actually look at that, the Ford has a higher rear axle weight rating than what the Ram does. All right, so looking at these trucks to the naked eye. Right now to me, the Ford looks like it, the back of it, the rails of it is higher than the Ram. So let's take a look. Both of these trucks, unless you're nine feet tall, you can't reach inside in the bed. The days of that are over. So let's take a measurement of how high these beds are. Okay, so we're on the ground, right straight up through the hub, and we are at 58 and a half from the ground to the top of the bed rail. Let's come over to the Ram. ground straight up through the hub and we are at 58 so the Ford is actually only a half inch higher in the rear than what the Ram is I didn't think that just by looking at it I honestly figured the Ford was at least an inch higher than what the Ram but it is not let's take a look at the front to the naked eye the fronts look fairly similar but it does look like to me, the Ford is still a bit higher. 
So let's take a measurement right straight up through the front. So right straight up through to the top of the hood there, we're about 53 and a half. Let's come over to the ram. Straight up through the middle and we are at 53 and a half to here, but to the actual top of the hood, the highest point, we're at about 55. So the ram is actually a bit higher than what the Ford is. So you have a garage. You're wondering, will this truck fit in my garage? The Ford, in this configuration, because this is not the Mega Cab, this is, these are both crew cabs, the Mega Cab would make a big difference. The Ford is about three inches or so longer than what the Ram is. But there you can see it because you gain space in the rear seating area and the box is bigger. The box in the Ram is six foot four. The box in the in the Ford is the box in the Ford is six foot eight. So you gain four inches of bed space in the Ford and you do have more room in the back. So there is the difference in length. So as far as towing, what are the towing numbers? I will put the towing numbers up right now. All right, so there you have the towing numbers, guys. Let's pop the hoods on these things and take a look at what makes these things move. All right, guys, so under the Ford, we have the 6.7 liter power stroke turbo diesel, 450 horsepower, 935 torque. Just looking at this engine, honestly, I get overwhelmed. Am I a diesel mechanic? Absolutely not but I'm overwhelmed by this engine. There's a lot going on here. Let's go over to the 6.7 inline six Cummins turbo diesel, 400 horsepower, 1000 foot pound of torque. Just right away looking at this, I feel much more comfortable with what's going on here. I look at this and I can understand how this thing is working. There's not hoses going everywhere, crisscrossing over top of the engine. The air box in this definitely needs to be bigger. That's one thing that I think they should have upgraded was the air box. You got this nice big thick hose and this little tiny air box. So if I was to buy one of these trucks, that air box would definitely be getting switched out with an SMB cold air intake with a big cone filter. Let these things breathe. They gotta breathe. They gotta breathe. We won't get started on that DEF stuff. But coming back over to this, there's just a lot going on guys. There's, there's, there's hoses you know all over the place but it works it works i've had no issues with my fords whatsoever zero engine issues transmission powertrains have been absolutely bulletproof so now that you've seen the trucks we've walked around them you've seen the payload numbers you've seen the interior space the bed space you know all that sort of stuff now we got to take these things for a drive and see how they operate, see how they get up to speed, see how they stop, see how they handle, all that stuff. All right guys, so we're gonna take the Ford first. Here's my next project to work on. Yeah, gotta get into that. All right, so let's take the Ford. I'm taking the Ford first because I'm used to driving the Ford and I wanna see if I can really notice you know a big difference between this truck and the Ram I'm gonna reset the trip just to see what we get for fuel mileage the Ram definitely has more sort of on-road worthy tires than what this truck has this truck has some has 35 by 12 and a half 18 inch general grabber x3 tires which are pretty aggressive and they're starting to get worn down a bit so they might be a bit louder but here we go so f-350 versus 3500 sort of on-road characteristics this truck handles really good it's honestly really easy to drive a real pleasure to drive visibility is definitely better than the ram your like i said your windshield is bigger so you do have more visibility over your windshield um, blind spots as far as blind spots in the back there really isn't any 
your visibility out the back is really good and the biggest thing to be honest that uh, is the hardest thing from going from a Ford to a Ram is the mirrors you can look at those mirrors they are hands down the best mirrors in the industry the uh, Chevs and the GMC's they're pretty close they pretty much have the same setup but in the non-tow configuration, the Ram mirrors are not as good as the Fords. So there's, there's no way of arguing that. I don't think anyone in the right mind would argue that. You can certainly get used to the Ram mirrors just by driving the truck. Um, in the last day, I got used to it quite a bit, but not like that. You can see absolutely everything out of those mirrors. So that is a huge bonus for the Ford. So here we are driving very smooth. Uh, truck corners very 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 easily steering's very light uh, the braking is really good there's not much brake dive at all on these trucks and there's not much body roll because they're they're super you know heavy they have a very stiff suspension so you're not going to get a lot of brake dive and a lot of body roll on either truck so neither truck will have that it's hard to tell you guys that the Ram is quieter on the inside for the cab than the Ford because of these tires right now are, are definitely louder than the ones in the Ram. But the actual cab itself in the Ram is, is quieter. My F250 Lariat Ultimate uh, is pretty close, but it, the, Ram, the Ram wins that. When you close the door in one of those trucks, it's like putting on a, a set of noise canceling headphones. But for now, we're just gonna we're gonna merge on a highway here in a in a couple minutes. So I'm gonna wait till then. We get on the highway. We're gonna we're gonna give her a little bit of juice, get up to speed, and do a little turnaround and come back and do the exact same thing in the Ram. Give you my sort of closing opinion on on the trucks. I'm not gonna tell you which one that you should buy because I've never owned a Ram, so I can't tell you you know what's the best truck to buy. I don't know because I've never had one. So we are just getting ready to get onto the ramp here to get onto the highway. And I'm gonna slow down to basically a stop. I have no one behind me, no one in front of me. I'm not gonna give it full gas. This is not full gas. I still have lots of pedal left. There's full gas, just so you know. These trucks have a lot of power. Power strokes absolutely get up and go. It's right there. They do like to shift down. I find they do like to shift down more than the Ram, but we will take the Rams next and you will see. So, getting up to speed on the highway, passing vehicles, neither truck you're going to have a problem with. So, we're going to set the cruise at 116 right there. We'll do the exact same thing in the Ram. Highway speeds. Very solid, very smooth. Both trucks for, for, for one ton trucks actually drive very good. So here's the highway. Not eventful at all, which is exactly what you want. So we're just gonna travel, we're gonna loop around, head back home, and I'll show you what the MPG number was. Okay, we're gonna loop around now. I just wanted to show you, uh, you know, coming to a stop, how the truck downshifts, the brakes. Like I said, not much brake dive at all brakes are very solid you see the hit in the bumps there you can feel it in the front end a little bit the rear end is super stiff. You don't really feel a whole lot back there. The truck doesn't bounce a lot in the back, but you can feel the front end bumps a bit. So we're gonna get back up to speed. I'm gonna try to, you know, hit the accelerator basically the exact same in the Ram. The shifts, the shifts in this truck are are smoother than in than in the Ram. That's one thing that I noticed basically instantly from driving the Ram is that you can feel the shifts and I don't I don't say that in a in a bad way because when you feel the shifts it does feel solid the shifts feel solid in the Ram the Ford's is smoother I think it's, it feels like it, it takes a little bit longer for it to go in its gear 
but the Ford transmission is very smooth, very smooth. You barely even notice the shifts. We have a few bumps right here. We'll test it out. Drives pretty good, drives pretty good. All right, so we made it back. 25 kilometers exactly is what this truck's saying. 15.9 liters per every 100 kilometers. Be interesting to see what the uh, what the Ram comes up with their trip because of these tires being bigger than factory. But enough for this truck, very uneventful, which is exactly what you want. Let's go jump in the Ram. Here we are in the Ram. Our trip is reset. Do the exact same trip. And last time we had to idle a little bit because there's vehicles coming, and this time we have to too. Okay. Oh yeah, she wants to spin. Complete different shifting feel. Completely different. Absolutely right off the get-go. The, the transmission feel is uh, so much different. The feel of the engine is different. Um, this truck likes to hold its highest gear possible as long as it can and use just use its torque it definitely tries to use the torque as much as it can use less rpm it handles really well the uh obviously it feels completely different than sitting in the ford just because of the trim levels but it handles really well the ford handles really well both trucks for being for being heavy duty trucks having big heavy front and heavy rear suspensions handle really well and handle bumps really well there's no problem cornering at all visibility in this truck like i said is good not as good as the ford here's what you have you know you have that box there so you do lose some vision out there the rear vision is pretty similar but the ford still does have a little bit better um vision out the rear the rear windows the passenger windows in the back and yes the mirrors in the ford beat these mirrors in this configuration when these mirrors are in tow configuration it's it's a virtual tie like it's it's basically the exact same thing the ram mirrors i don't know i don't know they keep holding on to this this flip up thing but i don't know why they just don't join the group with ford and 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 chev and do them the way they should be they should be up in that position all the time and telescopic back and forth i don't really understand but that's what they do and that's their choice you see a lot of guys towing their ghost trailers when they drive rams because the visibility in the mirrors just is not quite as good I can tell you right now that I am having a bit of a harder time keeping the speed down on this truck versus than on the Ford. The Ford was in six gear right now, just like this truck is, but this truck just has that pull. It, it does, it did just downshift right there, which a lot of times it does not want to do. It doesn't want to downshift, it just wants to use its torque, but right there it did downshift, but it's it's harder just feathering the pedal it's harder to keep this truck at under the speed limit the exact same thing we're going to come up to this this on ramp we are going to come to a stop basically and just accelerate we're not going to hammer on the thing i do not own this truck it has 189 kilometers on it it's not even close to being broken yet i'm not going to do that okay We've got nobody behind us. We got nobody in front of us. Perfect. So we're gonna basically come to a stop. Automatic wipers are on. And we're gonna go. You can feel the shifts. The Ford is definitely faster off the line. As far as, you know, coming from a dead stop, again, I did not, I did not hammer on either one of these trucks. That's not what I, what I was gonna do. That's not what I wanted to do for this test. 
The Ford is definitely faster. Okay, I gotta set this before I go too fast. The Ford is definitely faster off the line. There's not much dead in my mind on that. But this truck, I find right now, you know, we're, we're cruising at highway speed. We're in sixth gear. We're at about, uh, I'd say 1600 RPM. This truck has more pull in six gear without downshifting than what the Ford does. I'm just gonna give it a little tester now. I don't wanna mess up my fuel mileage too much. But there's six gear and she just goes. That did not downshift. That just decided to pull. With this much torque, it just wants to pull. This makes its max torque at 1800 RPM and its max horsepower at around 2800 RPM is what I believe. So we're just gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna cruise down to the end of this highway, do a loop around, I'll test the brakes out, and come on back. We'll hit those same bumps with, the, with this truck, and we'll get back and see what our mileage is. Pulling off the highway, so we'll test the, uh, you know, the downshifting and the brakes out. A few bumps here. Both trucks handle bumps really good, but it feels like they handle them differently. Downshift's really smooth. Brakes feel good. I think the Ford brakes feel a little bit stronger than what the Ram does. I think the Ram is a bit smoother but I feel like the Ford brakes feel a little bit stronger. She wants to go. But yeah, you can feel the shifts in this thing more than the Ford for sure. But like I said, it feels solid. It's it's almost, it's like, a, it's a good feeling. The Ford feels great because it's smooth and you don't even really notice it. But these shifts just feel like, you know, bang, it's in the gear bang it's in the gear bang it's in the gear it it doesn't feel like a bad thing at all yeah this thing i tell you once you get going once you get going it just wants to keep going the ford yes off the line hands down faster there's lots of videos on that the ford is a quicker truck from zero to 60. i would love to see it a test from 60 to 100 and see what wins because this thing just wants to pull it just wants to pull I would love to have a trailer behind this thing I would oh man I that's ex that's the video I would love to do I, I'd love to do I would love to have a trailer to pull behind this thing to test that out because I think it would would be amazing so here we go bumps soaks them up really well and again the ford did too it's it, it's a different it's a different feeling it's the front end the front end seems like it handles the bumps better in this truck than what in the ford the rear end i don't know i don't know I think you notice them a little bit less in the Ford than what you notice them in this truck. I think you, the Ford is just feels stiffer, but it's not bouncy, if that makes any sense at all. But anyway, just like last time, we're just gonna cruise back to the house. I'll show you guys the fuel mileage. Right now this truck the fuel mileage is uh, is quite a bit ahead of where the Ford was at this point. So we'll see when we get back. We'll see what the trip says. We'll see. Uh, we'll check that all out. All right. So we're back. Twenty six point three kilometers on this truck. Thirteen point five liters per every hundred kilometers. So this truck says we went one point three kilometers further than what the F three fifty did because of the difference. In the tire size it's quite a bit of difference in mileage as far as liters per every hundred but the speedometer is definitely off on that truck over there so any of you scientific guys out there that want to do that calculation go ahead please if you want to I could do it but uh, you guys can figure that out 
This truck, I do believe, is easier on fuel. Right now it was than what that one is, but not as much as what it's actually saying. But hey guys, there it is. There is my comparison of the 350 versus 3500. Every manufacturer out there has their positives and their negatives. There's things about the Ford that are better. There's things about the Ram that's better. There's things about the Chev that's better. Not much, but there's a few things. <laughs> Take the information I gave you, run with it, do what you want to do with it. If I was picking one, nope, I can't do that. I can't do that. I have, I have never owned a Ram, so I, I can't get into that, that comparison. Maybe if I own one, then I'll be able to tell you. But as of right now, I can't tell you what truck's better. I know from my personal experience, I've had no problems with my Fords whatsoever. A lot of guys have no, had no problems with their Rams whatsoever. So who knows, who knows, who knows. But anyway guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for lots more videos. Who knows, we might be getting one of these things. Who knows. But anyway, as always guys, till next time, take care, stay safe. See ya, bye.